Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. This is Vicious and today we're going to be going over a technical demo of the Ruckus Unleashed firmware. So in the last few videos I've done, I've mentioned that I'm getting rid of my Ubiquiti Unify stuff. I've replaced it with the Ruckus R600 access points and I highly recommended it to anyone who is used to the Unify environment because it, it works very similar and that you have a graphic interface you can go into and kind of manage your entire wireless network with one pane of glass. So today's demo, it's not really a tutorial, it's just kind of show you everything inside of the firmware so you know how this works, what you have options to, what you might be gaining and what you might be losing as compared to the Ubiquiti Unify because they're not exactly the same even though I compared them to each other in those past videos. So first thing I want to show you is this little graphic interface I wrote. This is something I use to control some stuff around the house. Like I can turn my computer audio on and off. The, the server rack has a power panel in the front. This is my mixer that I, I use to record. So if I open that up, it, it'll pop up. Uh, and then some of the stuff down here has my temperature sensors. And here, the Wi-Fi signal. I'm used to seeing this at like 67, 68%. And with the Ruckus R600 in the exact same location as my old Ubiquiti access point, it's now usually 99, 98, or 100. So I'm definitely getting better signal strength. So <clears throat> the main thing that most people would use, and all you really need for a basic setup, is the web page. There's the Unleashed web page, and I'm going to go ahead and log into it now, and we'll just kind of walk through everything that's in here. How to get configured to this point, that last video goes over the initial configuration. So in here, I can see that my internet connection is up and working. It'll tell me what port is connected on that master access point what my access point IP is, my gateway IP, my DNS, and it does reach out to the internet and tell me that it's connected. The next tab we have is gonna be our Wi-Fi networks. In this case, I have two. I have the main one I use for myself and all the production stuff in the house, and then I have one for the kids. The reason I separate them out is it makes it easier to monitor what the kids are up to, and also I can schedule their SSID so that if I wanna turn it off at a certain time, then I can. Now what you have in here, you can mouse over each one of these graph objects and it'll kind of give you details. We can see our signal strength here is excellent, moderate, and poor. You can see the no poor signal strength. Traffic for the last hour. We can go into each one of these individually and break that out a little bit more. So like 22 clients on just the main SSID. Traffic for the last hour. We can click on these and actually turn off, say, the receive and only show transmit and then the other way around, only show one or the other. So that's one option. We can break out client info. And here we'll see our clients. And it does show the MAC address, the IP address. It tries to fingerprint the OS and it has a name. You can set up aliases for these, but I haven't taken the time to do that yet, but it will be something I will be doing. Now, as far as options, you can create a new SSID or you can go and disable one, delete one, and edit. Let me show you what kind of options we have under edit. There's the name, and is this gonna be a standard? Is it gonna be guest access, hotspot service, social media, web ch WeChat? Are you just using uh, regular authentication, or are you using a MAC address authentication, we have EAP authentication, your encryption, WPA2, and then you can, of course, have your, like, your radius servers and such under advanced. We have zero IT activation. We have pre-shared key stuff. I mean, we're gonna just kind of mouse through it. Uh, we have priorities. We have access control. We have radio control. And we have some other options here as well. So there's tons of options in there. And of course, I can do that for each. And if I go up to the main one here, this is more or less the global configuration. So any new access point that I bring into the environment will pick up these defaults. All right, so let's collapse Wi-Fi. Let's go to clients. So under clients, we have our troubleshoot tab, which will let us basically look for a MAC address and we can do a trace route to it. If we click on one of them, we'll get the details button. So let's just check this one here. So we get the MAC address, AP. MAC address, how much traffic's come in and out, what radio is it using, what authentication, what channel, you know, your transmit drops, how long has it been connected. We can 
This is where we can set the aliases by renaming them. And we can also block them from here and unblock them from here. So if I want to block one of the kids' devices, this is where I'd come in and do it. And one thing I'm gonna try later today is figure out how to do this uh, through automation. And then we got speed test built in. So we can do that as well. And like I said, the troubleshooting. Last thing on here, under the access points, this is gonna be very similar to the Wi-Fi. We have a global under the summary. So this is where you would change your global presets. And then we have the individual ones underneath of it. So under the access points, there's a lot of stuff in here. We can say, what radio channels do we want access to? How wide of a channel are we gonna use? Transmit power. We can do the same for the five gigahertz band. And under other, you have the preferred master and a couple of, of other options, including disabling the status LEDs if those get in your way and you don't like to see them at nighttime. If you go to the individual access points, this is gonna be basically the exact same stuff, except now you're configuring the individual access point. And what I've done is I've come in here and said override the default global configuration, and I've set both of my access points for specific settings, just for the um, sake of having a perfectly set up network. I'm sure the auto would work great, but I've just been trained to never do auto. And the last thing is under admin and services. This is where we're gonna see our firmware version. We give it our, our systems name here. You can do an SMTP relay and have this set up to send out notices for you. It even does SMS, so you can have it send you text messages. Uh, IP settings are in here. This is where I have all my IP stuff set up. It does act as a DHCP server. There's a management interface, which I'm not even using. The DHCP client list and the preserved DHCP client IPs. Again, I'm not using DHCP on here. Your system time, your country code, roles, users. And right now it should just be me in there as the default admin. And it does have, have meshing as well. Again, not something I would normally use, but I could see that very being useful in some cases. Under services, you have AAA servers, access control, application recognition. We have Bonjour Gateway, dynamic pre-share key, guest access services, hotspot services, radio control, and under administrator, we have even more options with our preferences and, and these I'm just going through quickly, but you can see that each one of these has more tabs that break out from it. Backup and restore, so you can back up your configuration and restore it. Upgrading to new firmware. And again, the firmware for Unleashed is free. You just have to have a Ruckus account to download it. Some diagnostic tools built in. Your certificate, network connectivity, network management, and mobile app. And on that note, mobile app, that's exactly where I'm going to go next. One of the cool things about this is unlike, um, or I should say just like Ubiquity Unify, there is a phone app for it. So let me open up Team Viewer, where I'm already on my phone. And let me just completely back out here. It's called Unleashed. It's free to download. This is an Android phone. I'm sure it's the same on the iOS phones. Let's see. It does have remote management, so you can do this from outside of your home, but I dis disable that feature. I keep everything local. And in the app, you don't get as much as you do from the web graphic interface, but you do get quite a bit of stuff. So you can see your clients here. And if you wanna click on one of them, you'll bring up more information about that client. You can block that client from here, which is very handy. And if you go to edit things, this is where you can change like your alias. Under the access points, if you go into one of your access points, you'll get information about that access point. And of course you can go in there and make some minor changes as well, such as the name of that access point and what radios are gonna be used. And under Wi-Fi, if we go to our SSIDs, we can see our traffic graphs for the last one hour or 24 hours. Uh, we can not deselect them like we could on the full web interface. If you go to edit them, you can do the rate limiting from here and you can also do your scheduling from here. So 
very, very basic administration, but kind of nice for home users because blocking a client or scheduling an SSID are two of the main features I'd want to get access to. And being able to do that from the couch while I'm watching TV, <clears throat> that's a pretty nice thing to do. So we'll go ahead and close this off. And I'm going to get into one more very detailed thing with you guys. And that's going to be, even though we're using the graphic interface, the Unleashed firmware is based around graphic interface. We still have full blown SSH access. So let's log out of here. So if you didn't find something that you wanted in the Unleashed firmware, then I guarantee you that you're going to find it here. All right. <clears throat> Here we are at the Unleashed Network Command Line Interface. Kind of similar to Cisco. The question mark will show us what options we have, but apparently not every option that we have. So for example, I don't see the enable command, but I know that I can go into enable mode from here. And then I just enabled a ton more stuff. Uh, we can get any kind of information you could possibly want from here. We can reboot and shut down the APs. We can set up our factory defaults. We can change the logo. Uh, some of the deeper rabbit holes to go down is going to be the configuration and the show command. So like if I go to show and then do a question mark, look at all the things that you can show. Location services, AAA, DHCP, access point, access point group. I mean, performance, system info, ethernet info, the WLANs, the ACLs. You have layer um, two, layer three, layer four access uh, control list. I mean, we have our VLANs in here, our roles, our users, just tons and tons and tons of stuff that we can show. And then of course, often if you go to any of these, there's going to be more options once you get into one of them. Let's go look at uh, configure. So in the configuration, we have we can configure our location services, our AAA or DCP, our access point, the hotspot redirection. Here's some of those access control lists I was just talking about. User app policies, guest access forcing, um, meshing, alarms, email server, SMS server. I mean, some of this stuff you can get to from the graphic interface, but definitely there's a lot more stuff deeper in here. And this just keeps going and going and going as you dig into it a little bit further. So to not spend another 20 minutes just here, I, I will uh, have probably my Dropbox a link to a document, or at least have the link to where to get it. And that's the command line reference guide. And it's a 330 page guide of all the stuff that's in the command line driven control of the access point. So there's gonna be plenty of reading in here if you're actually interested. <clears throat> Now, I bought these and targeted advertising them as just a really high-end enterprise product for home use, and most of my home users will never, ever need this. But that's the reason you see 330 pages of command line options is because this is an enterprise access point, and in those environments, oftentimes, some of this stuff is used. So if you feel like home labbing with it or just exploring it, there's plenty of stuff to go look into. But otherwise, just for all my home lab guys, for my home users, who are maybe picking one of these up on my recommendation, just the Unleashed firmware, the web interface will have everything in it that you possibly need to get up and going. And that's pretty much the end of the demo video today. So if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to go down into the comments section and ask those questions, and I'll be sure to try to get back to you with the appropriate answer. Check out the video description. I'll have any relevant links or downloads down there in the description. And I just hope you enjoyed tuning in today. So once again, this was Vicious, and I'll see you next time.